Hey everyone, welcome back to another very exciting Unity VFX particle tutorial and today we're going to be working on this very simple and easy to make warp drive effect that you see here that's commonly used for effects where the ship, you know, suddenly accelerates and goes at extreme velocities through space. Now this one was inspired by, I guess, people just being interested in this effect that I posted earlier. Uh, it's a live wallpaper that I made and they all share this common element of these light bolts kind of flying at you in the screen and I have this open this is something from Star Trek this one's a little bit more different because each individual particle has a gradient on it which is pretty easy to make uh, if you just want to make the texture but in our case we're actually going to be using just the default particle that way you don't have to have any special textures available and then later on I'll just switch it up with my own capsule texture from Ultimate VFX. It's a really simple texture, it's literally just a capsule with a little bit of glow on it. So you can see No Man's Sky also did something similar. Uh, in their case they do have a textured particle that's colored from as a gradient. You can see it's got like what green, blue, purple, right? It's also got this orange yellow. So that's something pretty easy to make in Photoshop as well. Uh, but in our case, just for now, we're going to be working on this. And there's a lot of things you can do with this. You can easily, you know, expand the length scale to make it uh, seem like you're going faster or something, right? You can increase the number of particles if you wanted. Uh, you could also just go to the camera itself change the field of view, animate that for the full effect. But in this case, uh, like I said earlier, we're just going to be focusing more on the, the simple effect right here, the technique behind it. So without any further delay, let's get started. I'm just going to disable these, create a new particle system. Now by default, it should be, the emitter should be in the shape of a cone, which is exactly what we want. I'm going to reset this, maybe move it up a little bit just so it's aligned with the camera a bit better. Uh, let's say move it up 10 spaces forward from what from where our camera is, where your camera might be following the ship, like somewhere here. And by default, it's pointing into the z-axis, you can see. And we can just rotate it like this or using Y. I'm going to turn it around horizontally, so I'm just going to set this to 180. And that way it faces us. Uh, maybe I'll just take the start size down a tiny bit. Increase the rate over time. I'm going to turn the angle down so it's actually just this straight funnel, or tube rather, and then maybe increase the radius, turn the lifetime down to two-ish, up the start speed, and you can kind of see it's starting to look like a star field that you're flying through just a little bit. Maybe if I increase the number of particles like that. So the 168 particles, that's, that's pretty good. That's actually really small. Now once we change the render mode to stretch billboard, that's where you kind of start to see once you increase the length you know, where the warp drive effect comes from. Now, currently these particles are just flying way past the camera and we don't need that many alive at one time, so we can turn the life down till they're just cut off like so. Or you can actually just move them maybe a bit ahead to, let's say, 25 units, 25 meters or so, and then turn the lifetime back up a bit. You can increase the radius, a little bit of the angle as well, so maybe they don't fly directly into the camera if you really wanted to. And... Let's see, make this a bit longer. And then let's turn the color over lifetime module on and then set it so that it fades in. Right, so the first one has to be zero, somewhere in the center at 50%. It's completely solid and then back to being faded out, right? So now it's a bit softer and it doesn't look as jarring. Now here you can set the color to something like, let's say, yellow or bluish if you wanted space. You can see in this one, in all of these actually, except maybe that one, that the effect is very bright and glowy. And to do that, instead of using the alpha, the alpha blending mode for the shader, uh, which by default I think is alpha blend, yeah, it's alpha blend pre-multiply, we're going to use additive. So what we'll just do is we'll create a quick material, right? We'll call it matte, I don't know, warp streak something. I already have one made, so I'm just going to call it warp streak two. Set it to particles, additive. Maybe just turn this way up and then set the particle texture to the default particle texture or whatever else you want if you have like a capsule or something and then use that one instead. So that'll give us a brighter sort of mode here. So I think that looks a lot better. So let's set that to maybe orangish, right? You can already see it looks pretty nice on its own. You can also set this to random between two colors if you were so inclined, something like maybe darker, more orangish. And that's about it, right? Like that's basically the technique behind the warp drive effect. Let's duplicate this maybe and create a blue version. And you can do that as well. And this one could be perhaps 
uh, emitting more particles, maybe, or less particles. More particles, I don't know. We could make the radius larger, so it could be more of a background-ish looking effect. And move this up if we wanted. Right, there's a lot of different things you can tweak here. Maybe make this 35, turn up the start lifetime. So that looks pretty cool. And again, like I said, you can animate the length scale through script or using the animator. That actually looks even better, I think, than the effect that I showed you initially, right? You can replace the texture now with the capsule. Let's see if I can find this. Okay, my keyboard is positioned really awkwardly. And then you can get it to look like this, maybe, combined together. That looks really cool. And that's basically the gist of this effect, right? So that was a really quick tutorial, uh, pretty easy to make. I'll leave a link to Ultimate VFX in the description. Please subscribe, leave a comment, let me know what you'd like to see. Maybe in the next tutorial what I can do is actually work on showing you how to make this star feel in the background here that you see there. Anyways, thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.